This video will explain how to create a journal in Manifold. Manifold is a digital book publishing platform that recently released a new journals feature. To begin, I'm going to show an example of what a journal in Manifold can look like. This is a critical ethnic studies journal uh, published by the University of Minnesota. And this is the landing page for the journal. Uh, you can notice a nice big header image. Here you have the journal title, subtitle, and description. Off to the side, you have some external links. So you can see their copyright information, get more information about their editorial board. This is likely the, the homepage for the association itself. Scrolling down, we can see the journal organization. Volumes as the umbrella holding the issues. So volume eight has one issue. Volume seven has two issues. Volume six has two issues. And if I click into one of these issues, you can see that the issue level landing page has a similar layout. We have a heading image, title, subtitle, authors, and descriptions. They've also included a logo image here specific to the issue some more external links. And as you scroll down, you can see the table of contents organized into various sections and their metadata at the bottom. I'll click into one of these texts so you can get a sense of what it looks like. And you're also able to embed images into this text if you'd like. But this is a helpful introduction to what a journal can look like in Manifold, and it's helpful to have that um, as a reference while you're building your own example. Um, and so we've actually created a PowerPoint of Manifold examples. There's several journal use cases in here that you can click through, and this will be available on the website where you found this video. So we're going to jump into creating your own journal. You'll need to go to the UW Manifold homepage and log in with your Manifold account by clicking on the person icon in the top corner. Once you're logged in, this button will appear and you'll need to enter admin mode to create your journal. Once you're in admin mode, your screen will be black like this and you'll see this new menu at the top and you'll click over to journals. You will click the add a new journal button and you'll enter a title, subtitle, and brief description. You'll enter these to create your project, but you're able to edit these at any time. So I'll just call this and a brief description. I'll save and continue. And this is creating my journal. Once you've created a journal, you'll see this menu off to the left. This menu has properties, layout, access, metadata, issues, and volumes. And in this video, I'll walk through each of these um, menu items, but right now we'll just do properties and then I'll give you an opportunity to pause the video, create your own journal and edit your own properties. So you can see my title subtitle that I just entered. There's also a slug. This will be the back end of the URL leading to your manifold project. So you'll want to make sure this is a legible, logical slug that makes sense for sharing. Um, this makes sense to me, but if it included a bunch of random characters and numbers, I could edit it. You can also add a thumbnail to your project. The default is this manifold graphic. You can change the color of it, or you can upload a file. I will upload just a sample file. Um, this is an image that I downloaded earlier. Another thing to think about in draft mode, or sorry, in the properties menu is draft mode. Um, so automatically a new project will be in draft mode and you can tell that by the toggle. Uh, when you're ready to publish your journal and make it visible to the public, 
you will toggle out of draft mode and that will publish your project. But while you're editing it, you'll want to stay in draft mode. Um, this social section, this is if you'd like to um, create a specific shareable information. So when someone shares your Manifold project on social media, you can create a custom title, custom description, and a custom thumbnail um, if you want that to be different than what's automatically created when someone shares your project. Um, and then you don't need to worry about the taxonomy section. So once I've updated all of my properties, um, the main ones being title, subtitle, slug, and thumbnail, then I'll click save. And if you'd like, you can pause the video now, create your own journal, and update your own properties section. All right, so now that you've created your journal and you have your properties, you can customize what your journal landing page looks like. Um, you remember how nice the Critical Ethnic Studies journal looked? Uh, we can take a look at what our journal currently looks like, and it's not going to be very pretty. <laughs> there's no images, there's no external links, there's this very basic text. And you can see it's giving us this error message that the journal is currently empty. There's no volumes or issues. So looking at the layout tab, it's very easy to get into the weeds with layout, but I'll just go over some of the options here. Um, in description and images, if you click edit, you'll get this pop-out menu. This is where you can edit that brief description, maybe make it a longer description. You can add a background image, and you can also add a logo image. So I'll just demonstrate what these look like. Go to file. background image, this nice image of the Open Scholarship Commons. Here's where you can add alt text. This is um, important for accessibility. So this allows people who use screen readers to understand what the image is showing. Um, so I would say, uh, Open Scholarship Commons Lobby. And then I could also add a logo for my project. And this is just a picture of me. You can also edit your background color using hex codes. And um, you could add image credits for these images. So I'll save these and then you can see how they show up on the background. Just refresh this to make sure these are showing up. So it's taking a second to load this background image, but that image of the Open Scholarship Commons is what's processing in the background here. And then the logo image, that's me in the center. So you can see how these things translate to your journal landing page. Calls to action. So these are the links that you saw on this Critical Ethnic Studies journal homepage right here. So these are ways to add external links to your homepage. And then while we're over here, so this is their background image and they've not chosen to upload a logo image. So they don't have that photo inserted in the, in the center here. So those are some other layout options. So if I wanna add calls to action, I can add a button or a link. That's just a stylistic choice. You can also add social links. So this is if you have a social media accounts associated with your journal or maybe your association that you'd like to be connected through your Manifold project, you can enter those here. So I'll give you another chance to pause the video and edit your layout. And while I do that, I'm going to just put this image on the screen for a moment. So you can pause and take a look at how the different layout elements show up on the screen. So feel free to pause here and edit your own layout. A 
Okay. Another important step in creating your journal is your metadata. Metadata is especially important for digital projects because you're putting your project out there on the internet where people are going to encounter it. They are going to wonder, how can I use this? And they are going to wonder, how can I share it? And how do I credit um, the authors? So in the metadata section, there's copyright information. There's an identity section for a DOI or a unique identifier. And then there's publisher and bibliographic information. So at the very least, uh, we encourage you to enter copyright information. You can find more information about different Creative Commons and other copyright licenses on our UW Libraries site. You can also request a DOI through UW Libraries, and you can um, create a DOI at several different levels of your Manifold project. So you can create a DOI for your entire journal. You can create a DOI for each issue, and then you can create a DOI for each text within each issue. Um, and then you can add as much bibliographic information as you'd like. This is just gonna help people know how to find and cite uh, your project when they do find it. So I'm just gonna give you a moment to pause the video again and either enter your own metadata or go look up that information about copyright and DOIs. And then we'll move on to creating issues and volumes. Okay, when you're creating issues and volumes, um, we remember back to the critical ethnic studies example, you can see how these show up. So the volume uh, is the umbrella for the issue. At the volume level, there really aren't any uh, properties to edit. It's really just a container for the issues. So when you're creating volumes and issues, you need to create of the volume first. So you'll click here on volume, click the add new volume button. And I just assign this as number one. The slug again is the back end of the URL. So this is getting added to whatever your journal URL is. So you don't need to write out, you know, Andrea test manifold journal volume one as your slug. You can just put volume one. I'll create my journal volume. Now you can see that this volume one is created. And if I click on it, I'm not taken to another menu where I can update properties because there are no other properties to edit for the volume. This is all there is to do with it. So a very quick step and then you'll create your issue and add it to that volume. So if we go into issues, click the add a new issue button. This is gonna be issue one in volume one. So I can assign it to a volume with this drop down menu. You don't need to worry about assigning it to a project. You'll just be assigning it to a volume. Okay, and I can see I've successfully created issue one and it's correctly assigned to volume one. When I click on issue one, I am taken to a whole new menu screen where I have a bunch more properties that I can edit. So I'm gonna allow you to pause the video here to create your volume and journal and then come back when we're ready to update some of the issue level settings. All right, so at the issue level, so you can see here, this is my journal. We're in the issue, <laughs> in this specific issue. Um, in the issue, you have some similar menu settings as you have at the journal level. You actually have even more. This analytics page is sort of a homepage that you'll be taken to when you come to your issue. It can give you information about the people visiting your, your issue. The properties menu will look very familiar. It's got a title, subtitle, issue number. This is an option if you'd like your issues to sort in a non-chronological order. For example, if you wanted to bring a special issue to the top. This is where you assign it to the volume. Uh, your publication date will automatically update once you take your project out of draft mode. Uh, here we see the slug. It's a little bit long, but it's logical, so that's fine with me. The option to upload a thumbnail, 
taxonomy again, which you don't need to worry about. And then here's the way to toggle it out of draft mode once you're ready. Um, and you don't really need to worry about these other settings. This is something to, interesting to talk about. So um, you can choose to disable public annotations and comments on your issue and your journal. So if you leave this as is, um, anyone with a Manifold Reader account will be able to not only read, but also add comments and annotations on your journal. Um, that can be a great way to encourage interaction and feedback with your journal. But um, if you are worried about maybe what type of comments you might be getting, if you're working on a contentious issue, or if you just don't want to um, need to worry about monitoring public comments, you can turn that feature off um, by toggling on this uh, disable feature. So here, I'll just call this uh, issue one of my test, just to show you how these things show up. Um, I'll just make my thumbnail pink for the time being, keep it in presentation mode, and I'm gonna save this. So let's see what our issue looks like. All right, so now you can see my beautiful background image and logo have been carried over from the journal. I have issue one of my test. And then if you scroll down, you can see that my page needs some help because I haven't, um, haven't added any metadata and I haven't added any texts. But on the Critical Ethnic Studies Journal example that we've been looking at, you can see what this can look like. <laughs> you can have your title and your description, um, and you can have a nicely designed issue level layout. So I'll go back to my menu. So the properties that's familiar, layout is also gonna look very familiar. We have our description and images, calls to action and social links. That's the same as on the journal level, so I'm not going to go into it now. The issue level also has these content blocks. So these are drag and drop options. I'll show you what I mean by that. You can drag these down, just save, when you want different elements to be showing up on your page. And then you can move them around very easily like this. So now when I go to my to view my issue. You can see I have these three content sections, a table of contents, metadata, and texts. And I'm creating and editing those by dragging around these different options. So if I had, if I wanted to put resources on the landing page, I could drag that down. Um, and once you add texts, add metadata, and configure a table of contents, these won't have these warning messages. But this is something that you can spend a lot of time playing around with, really getting into the weeds with. Um, so I'm not going to get into it here, um, but that, that's how you can edit around those content blocks. Um, briefly, I'll go over access and people. Access is where you can grant editor permissions to people who you want to be able to edit these back end settings of the issue. Um, and so you can grant these on an issue by issue basis, and you'll just click this button and select a manifold user. So anyone that you want to grant manifold or anyone that you want to grant editor permissions to will need to have a manifold account. So access is separate than people. People is just um, crediting authors and contributors without giving them editing access. Um, these authors and contributors will need to have a Manifold Reader account, but they won't need to have any special Manifold permissions. And finally, again, you'll need to add your metadata for the issue level. This page should also be very familiar from the journal level. Uh, copyright, unique identifiers, publisher, and bibliographic information. So I'm gonna pause here. You can edit the properties, layout, access, people, and metadata of your issue. 
you're probably not ready to edit all of these things, but I think you could at least edit some stuff in properties and layout to get a feel for it. And then when we come back, I'll demo how to add a text to your journal. When I'm ready to upload a text, I'll select text from the side menu over here. And then you'll see a couple of button options uh, in just a text. Let's so bring in a text from the outside, uh, creating a new text, which is creating a text directly within Manifold. And then there's an option to create categories to organize your texts into. Between these two options, we recommend uh, ingesting text from the outside. Um, this just means that you'll always have ownership over your documents and that they exist outside of the platform should you ever want to move away from Manifold or Manifold ceases to exist for whatever reason. So to ingest a new text, you'll click this button and this side menu will offer you a couple different options for bringing in outside files. One is to upload a file from your computer, like a Word doc. The other is to upload a file from a URL that would be a Google Doc um, or an EPUB or an HTML file. For this example, I'm going to bring in a Google Doc. And so I'll go over here to my example. And because you're creating these texts outside of Manifold and then bringing them in, you want to do all of your editing and final formatting in this source document before you bring it into Manifold. And I will show you later how to edit documents once they're already in Manifold, but you definitely want to try to do as much as you can before you bring it in. Um, and part of that is looking at the formatting. So Manifold will respect any formatting that you set in your source document. And formatting can be really important for people using screen readers who might be navigating the document by headings or using a tab. So normally you would want this to be your title and you can see what the heading status is right here. Title, heading one, normal text. That would be normally how you would do it for a document, but something to note about Manifold is that when you pull it into Manifold, this like title of the document itself becomes the title heading, the, like the top of the hierarchy. So you'll wanna set this as actually your heading one, the second level of the hierarchy, this one as heading two, and then this can stay as normal text. So that's just something that's a little bit quirky to note about um, heading formatting in Manifold. But once the formatting looks how you'd like it, you also need to adjust the sharing settings. So you want to make sure that anyone with the link can view, and that will give Manifold access to read the contents of your document. So when you're ready, you'll copy the link, go back over to Manifold, paste your URL, and you'll get this little button that says to start ingestion is Manifold's word for uploading. And once it's working, you'll see a little log letting you know that it's making progress. All right, so once it's complete, you'll get this complete button here and you'll click that and there is your text. Um, before we go into the settings that you can edit on an individual text level, I also want to demonstrate this create category function. Um, so this is if you want your table of contents on your home page of your journal to organize your text into different categories. Maybe you want a front matter section followed by uh, research articles and then prose or something like that. You could create a new category. So I'll do front matter. And then you'll see my category pops up here. And then I can just drag by holding these two little lines, drag my text into that category. And if I had other texts, I could drag and drop those into whatever category I wanted. So that's a nice feature for organi organizing your texts. Um, so now I'm gonna click into the individual text. So this is, we're in our issue. We've added a text to that issue, and we're back to this uh, menu that should now be very familiar. We have our analytics page. Um, each individual text has a properties menu. So this is the title that was pulled in. Oh, and actually, before I edit this, let me just show you what this text looks like. It looks great. My headings, my formatting I've pulled in. I believe there's an image in this article if I scroll down. 
yep, you can see how an image gets brought in. So maybe I would want to go back and format that on its own line, but the quality you can see of that image is, is very good. So this is what texts look like once they are ingested. And then, yeah, I can edit my properties. I could give it a subtitle. Um, this slug is looking really messy, so I'm going to cut it down just to be the Duwamish people. Um, I could enter a short description of my text. And I could also add a cover image specifically for that text if I wanted to. Um, again, I can toggle this on once I'm ready for this text to be published. This allows some more flexibility and maybe you want to publish your issue, but you're not ready to publish every text in your issue. You can edit that on the text by text basis. Um, if you want to override any sort of access restrictions on this individual text, you could do that there. For now, I'll just save those properties. People, similar to the issue level, you can credit authors and contributors. Um, and then I'll just quickly show metadata. Again, you can add as much or as little, but you should definitely add copyright information. And you can add a DOI on the text by text level. Um, and again, the same bibliographic options. And then the last thing I'll demonstrate for a text is re-ingesting. So let's say that I've uploaded my text. I've edited a bunch of these properties now that I'm happy with, but I realize that I actually want to have um, an exclamation point in the title. I'm not able to edit that directly in Manifold, but I can re-ingest my text in a way that maintains all of the settings that I've already adjusted. So this re-ingest option from the menu will look very familiar to that initial ingestion option. So I have uploading a file or bringing in a URL. So I'll go back to my source document and I'm just gonna add an exclamation point, something obvious for the demonstration. Copy my link. Go back to Manifold. Hopefully it doesn't make me wait quite as long to re-ingest. And it'll be the same. I'll just start ingestion. Click that button. Watching my log go by. Okay, now my ingestion is complete. I'll hit that complete button. And then let me just refresh to make sure those settings came through and I'll show you the difference. So now you can see the exclamation point, just like I wanted it. So that is how you can up upload a text into your journal project. I also uh, want to show you just quickly, I'm not going to do a full demo, but I want to show you, you can also ingest resources. So I think one of the strong points of Manifold is its ability to incorporate lots of different multimedia resources into a digital project. So if I wanted to add a resource, I would click this resource button. And then here you can get an idea of the different types of resources that you're able to add. Images, video, audio, external links, spreadsheets, downloadable PDFs and documents, iframes. Any of these you can add and you edit the properties in a very similar way to what we just did with the text. And you're able to incorporate them into a journal in the same way that you would a text. So it's a great way to put text and multimedia resources side by side with one another um, in your table of contents, for example. There's also ways that you can embed resources in texts. If you have questions about that, um, please reach out and schedule a consultation. Um, there's also a series of other resources on our UW LibGuides page for Manifold. Um, and so I encourage you to seek out resources there and schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with um, either me or Verletta, who's the head of the Open Scholarship Commons. Um, okay, that's the end of this video. Um, Hopefully in this video, you've been able to create a journal, create a volume and an issue in that journal and upload a text to that journal. I do really encourage you as you're playing around in here to look at examples of other journals. Um, I think this critical ethnic studies is a really strong example. 
this is a great way to see what's possible and then play around with Manifold as a platform, see how it can best meet your needs. Please reach out with any questions and thank you.